Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, August 5th, 2024, and today we are going to be taking a look at a brand new morning consult poll alongside many others that shows Kamala Harris advancing from where she was just a week ago in the head to head matchup against former President Donald Trump. Kamala Harris now maintains a four point lead, the largest we've seen for a Democrat in quite some time on the national level, a consistent trend line in favor of the vice president, one that shows Democrats are doing far better than they were doing under President Joe Biden. Now, these numbers here showing Vice President Harris ahead by four points is, again, in track, uh, tracks with a lot of the data that we've been seeing over the past couple of days. Donald Trump's lead on the two-way matchup has narrowed down to just 0.7%, where at one point in time, when it was Kamala Harris at initial glance, he was ahead by two. And when it comes down to the five-way race, this includes Jill Stein, Cornell West, and RFK Jr., Kamala Harris now leads in more polls than not, on average is up by under half a point. Now, if you remember what the numbers were, with President Biden, you can see just how substantial a change like this actually is. From a Trump plus three point lead and growing, Kamala Harris has completely reversed the numbers we are looking at today. Being now ahead in the most recent polls, the morning consult one has yet to be added into the average here, and it looks like as we get closer and closer to the convention and the first presidential debate, Kamala Harris continues to expand her advantage. And the betting markets are also shifting in a way that we hadn't seen in quite some time. The betting markets for the first time in 90 days show a Democratic contender as the most likely candidate to win the 2024 presidential election. When it comes down to which political party people identify uh, will win the election, Democrats again pull ahead for the first time in roughly two months. So a really strong position for the Democratic Party under Vice President Harris. Now, a lot of data also suggests that Kamala Harris's approval rating is doing quite well. What we find in polls from The Economist and The Morning Consult is that a lot of the data is really driven by the fact that Kamala Harris is now perceived more positively than she was in the past. Over the past six months, we've seen Kamala Harris's approval rating rival that of President Biden. It really wasn't too good. But immediately after the announcement, we actually saw a significant uptick in overall approval. President Biden today stands at negative 15.7, Vice President Harris down just 6.9%. And we can take a look too. Again, this massive, massive skyrocketing from a 37% approval rating uh, to 43% nationwide, nearing 44%, a very, very big uptick, unlike anything we have ever seen in recent American history. And you can see that for practically the entirety since 2021, Kamala Harris has been at a very low point in terms of overall favorability rating, meaning that at this point, Kamala Harris is on track to be at one of the highest points she has been in over three years. That's really good news for the Democratic Party. And so Kamala Harris coming into this with a really strong approval, again, drives the reason why she now leads Donald Trump in a way that President Biden simply could not. And it translates not only to the betting markets, but also to the forecasting sites. Ones like Nate Silver that shows that right now Kamala Harris has a pretty strong position to stand against uh, Donald Trump. 53% chance of victory, predicted 282 electoral votes, with a 67.7% chance at winning the popular vote. On the day that Joe Biden dropped out of the race, Donald Trump was not only favored to win the Electoral College by a pretty significant amount, it was 70 to 30, but also the popular vote favor probability was also in favor of Donald Trump. And so really massive, massive gains we have seen for the Democratic Party. Just take a look at this chart here. The trend line over the past two weeks alone has been phenomenal for the Democratic Party. And expanding this is only a step in the direction that Democrats have been really hoping this race was going to go, a direction and a step towards what we saw back in 2020. Because if you remember, Back in 2020, Donald Trump led Joe Biden, uh, sorry, D Joe Biden led Donald Trump by a very substantial amount. Uh, this time, four years ago, Joe Biden led by roughly six points nationwide. And so Donald Trump leading by roughly a point at face value would seem as if this election is a very big landslide victory for Donald Trump, a seven point improvement off of 2020. But what we know from the 2022 midterms and a post row era and a post Dobbs era is that the high propensity voters now lean more towards the left rather than towards the right. A very big difference from what we saw in every election prior to that one. On top of that, too, the polls in 2022 proved to us that they can far, far, far underestimate Democratic support, maybe are you know somewhat accurate on the national level, but it doesn't always translate to down ballot victories for the Republican Party. If you remember back in 2022, Republicans won the national popular vote by three points nationwide. And yet in states like Pennsylvania and Michigan and Wisconsin, the Democratic Party fared far better than a three point Republican victory, even in the cases that Republicans did win. A huge contrast with the 2020 election. And so Morning Consult, again, not only is one that shows Kamala Harris ahead by four points, but you also have to look at it from the lens of what we have seen in the past few Morning Consult polls. One's taken a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, even under Biden. 
In the last poll that was taken, a morning console between Trump and Biden, we can see that Trump led by four points nationally, according to the morning console, four percentage points nationally. For Kamala Harris to be up eight points today, that was four points today, that is an eight point swing from where we were just roughly two weeks ago. And you can see that they also did some polls of Harris versus Trump. And at that point in time, they weren't too strong for Vice President Harris either. Morning Consult had Trump up by one. And then another poll was taken, had Trump up by two. But then the announcement happened. Right around this time, we saw a full force of effect of benefit for Kamala Harris. Numbers started moving in her direction. She started raising more money. She started reeling in endorsements. And people became more comfortable with the idea of Vice President Harris as the nominee. So again, they did a poll immediately after the announcement. Then Harris took the lead by one point, a three-point swing. And now that's the most recent number we see. Morning Consult also showing Harris with a one-point advantage. And guess what? The overall number here now is a four-point lead in the most recent set of polls from the Morning Consult. So again, Trump plus four three weeks ago, Harris plus four today. It is hard, hard, hard to overstate how good of a decision this was for the National Democratic Party and how good of a decision this was for President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris if their goal, which it seems like it has been, to win this election. The numbers are looking very strong. In swing states too, new polls out of Pennsylvania, I'm talking about it later today, a Republican, Republican pollster shows Kamala Harris ahead in the state of Pennsylvania, or, or tied, a Democratic pollster shows her ahead by four. Averaging that out with nonpartisan pollsters like what we've been seeing, conclude the same thing we've understood is that Kamala Harris has a one to two point lead in the state of Pennsylvania. And when you take a look too at some of the improvements that have been made in states like Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, it states that the Republican Party never really thought Kamala Harris had much strength in. States that Republicans thought she would not be able to do quite well in. And yet, here she is, taking Wisconsin in the most recent poll we've seen from, uh, on average, Kamala Harris has a narrow advantage. In Michigan, she has a narrow advantage. In Pennsylvania, she has a narrow advantage. Overall, the 44 electoral votes there are enough to give Kamala Harris a victory with 270 electoral votes. When you fill in the remainder of the map, we can just go ahead and take a look. You can see exactly why Democrats are so excited about the possibility of VP Harris being on the ticket, because it means a map like this becomes far more possible than where it was under President Biden. And that is something Democrats are looking forward to, taking all the Biden states from 2020, but taking away Georgia and Arizona. And honestly speaking, even if you take away Nevada, the numbers are there. And Vice President Harris has an absolute pathway to 270 electoral votes. Now, we're seeing Kamala Harris announce her vice presidential choice tomorrow. She is going to do a swing state tour across Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. The order actually goes Pennsylvania, then uh, Wisconsin, then Michigan, North Carolina, Georgia, then Arizona, and then Nevada. It's going to be a seven-state tour across five states with her VP contender. It's going to be a massive, massive, massive turnaround and one that Democrats have been quite excited for for some time. Kamala Harris reaching 270 electoral votes is a really, really good number. It, it shows her that she's already at this baseline here. And so what I'm interested in seeing, too, is that Kamala Harris not only can expand beyond the 270, but we could see potentially expansion into state like North, states like North Carolina, states that typically were not expected to go to the Democratic Party as they were under, for instance, Joe Biden, right? States that weren't really within contention. 270 electoral votes is exactly what Kamala Harris needs to win the presidency. And it very much can go further, especially as numbers like these start to roll out. Kamala Harris being ahead by four points. Kamala Harris being ahead in states like Pennsylvania. Kamala Harris being ahead in some of these battleground states. There is genuine reason to believe that this momentum not only, not only has been continued, but will continue from here on out. Because what we have seen over the past three weeks is consistency. More money than ever. More interest than ever. More engagement than ever more, you know, better numbers than in a very, very long time. And arguably, based on some of these polls, better numbers than ever. Democrats really lucked out with this Hail Mary that Joe Biden threw them. Kamala Harris very gracefully accepted. It was very interesting to see how all of this panic has now turned into enthusiasm and energy for the Democratic Party. All of these call outs against President Biden have turned into complete and total endorsements for Vice President Harris. And this unification and characterization of President Trump and his VP choice, J.D. Vance, has actually seemed to be very beneficial for the Democratic Party. Because when you take a look at how people perceive people like Donald Trump in some of these metrics, you start to understand why Kamala Harris is winning the presidency in a way that President Biden could not. 
because on levels of popularity, she's still more approved than she is disapproved. In terms of favorable coverage, because she is doing this with a different lens and a different take than Joe Biden, there's not as much negative press. There isn't one good news, uh, you know, one piece of good news about something the administration does, coupled with three bad pieces about how Democrats want Joe Biden to step down. Now it's pr practically all good news for Kamala Harris, more money raised, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that favorable coverage makes voters more likely to vote for her. On top of that, the news cycle has now turned away from being entirely negative of Biden to more negative of Trump. And I know a lot of Republicans think that the media has been entirely against Trump this entire cycle. Just take a look at the way they covered the Joe Biden dropout and the way uh, and the lead up to it. It's not be beneficial or at all favorable for, uh, for President Joe Biden. And so you see there that the news cycle turning on Trump is reality, right? You started to see a lot of beneficial coverage after the assassination attempt, after choosing his nominee uh, for VP, after the Republican National Convention. It was a perfect storm of everything that could have been good for Donald Trump in terms of press coverage, in terms of media coverage, in terms uh, of changing the dynamics of the race. And yet, two weeks later, three weeks later, none of it seems to matter. And this news cycle is again turning back on Trump. And on that ever old, ever old age concern the Democrats have been running away from, it seems, and Republicans have been running towards. Now they're backpedaling and Democrats are reversing. They're getting on Trump for age concerns. Just 51% of the nation says that Donald Trump is fit to serve another term mentally. 51%. Granted, it's better than Joe Biden, and Joe Biden reasonably could have had a pathway to win the presidency. It would have been very narrow, but it wouldn't have been impossible to happen this cycle. And yet 67% of the nation said Biden does not have the mental acuity to serve out another term. But less than 40% of Americans believe that about Vice President Harris, and that makes sense. She's just 59 years old. For Donald Trump, half the nation believes he does not have the mental acuity. So this age issue, this Sleepy Joe issue, the way that Republicans were going to try to brand themselves and push away and push against President Biden, it doesn't seem to happen, and it didn't seem to happen in the way, sorry, rather, can no longer seem to happen in the way that Republicans were hoping for. The entirety of the Republican convention, it was always the Biden administration. They tried to tie in Biden and Harris. For the most part, they said Joe Biden. For the most part, they talked about Biden's, uh, you know, uh, negatives. They talked about qualities that they didn't like to see in President Biden. So many different things. They said, you know, Joe Biden, you're fired. That was the branding of an entire day of the Republican convention. And yet, just that weekend after, Joe Biden dropped one of the biggest, biggest, biggest changes that we have seen in a presidential election in United States history and moved up to his vice president, and voters are positively responding to that. And so I would not only continue to track this head-to-head -head in this five-way race, where Kamala Harris now leads for the first time in a very long time. You can see that the numbers early on in the race, Trump plus five, Trump plus four, Trump plus two, Trump plus three, and I think a lot of that too, and we'll talk about this in a future video, is that third-party voters, third-party voters were at an all-time high because a lot of those were disaffected Democrats. People who believe that Joe Biden should not be running for another term and wanted another option, whereas Trump's base has arguably been very loyal. We can see that in the earlier stages, Trump took massive leads when the third party candidates were in the race. Joe Biden wouldn't even clear 40 percent. But in the most recent poll that has been taken, Kamala Harris is at 49 percent nationwide. And the overall average uh, you know, vote share for some of these Democratic or uh, sorry, left leaning uh, third party candidates don't even seem to be impacting Kamala Harris in a way that is super substantive because she is in fact doing better here than she is in the direct head to head. But overall, Kamala Harris has made major improvements since the last time we saw this amount of polling data done and that showed President Biden in a very poor position for this election cycle. So Democrats definitely have a lot to look forward to with the VP announcement coming likely tonight or tomorrow with the Democratic convention with potentially a first Democratic debate. There are reasons to believe that the numbers could continue to grow. The question is, when does this momentum end? When does this honeymoon period end? When does it get to a point where Kamala Harris starts to see dips in polls, negative numbers in swing states? Because a lot of this has been optimism for the Democratic Party. A lot of this has been moving forward in the right direction, but not there yet. The morning console poll, though, does show that this expansion on the national level is not halted. This trend line on the national level is continuing. And Democrats could build up and build up and build up to a point where instead of being down three points, like they were under Biden three weeks ago, they could be up four points under Kamala Harris today, according to the morning console. There are many different pathways forward, and these new data points suggest that Kamala Harris and the Democratic Party at large are in a far better position than they were just three weeks ago. And so we'll be watching, taking a look at the states, taking a look at the fundraising numbers, taking a look at the convention reactions, taking a look at the media coverage. We'll be watching closely because movements like these can't go unnoticed. Because for the first time in months, the morning consult has the Democratic Party candidate ahead by four points nationally in a way that we have not seen in a very, very long time. And Democrats reasonably should be excited and optimistic 
about the status of this election and the outcome on November 6th, 2024. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter at the bottom left of the screen, top left of the screen. There's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist of my 2024 presidential election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.